What's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Publisher and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how easy it is to put together a document such as maybe a journal or a drawing pad where you can put different daily prompts across each one of your pages. So if that's something you'd like to learn, let's go ahead and get started. So on the screen in front of you, you can see I've got one of my journals which I have available on Etsy. This one in particular is for a runner. So if you guys are into running and you are looking for a running journal, then you can find this on my Etsy store and I will leave the link in the description. So what I want to draw your attention to is just right down here on my main page, which is going to be this page one and this page two right here is just at the bottom right hand side. You can see we have this daily quote and on the other page we have it as well right there. So at the moment you can see they're both two different quotes and in my document at the moment I only have eight pages as you can see over here on the left hand side. However, this isn't important. This is just the way I like to set up my document. So what's going to happen is we're going to use the data merge tool and that's going to generate all of the additional pages that I need. And the way that's going to work is we're going to duplicate page five right here and page six. And we're going to duplicate that as many times as we need to, to make sure that we can fit all of our quotes in there. For this specific document, I've got around 80 quotes. So these two pages will be duplicated 80 times. However, I'm going to talk you through all of this in just a moment. But what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go ahead and just generate these pages so you guys can see how this works. So I'm going to go up to window on the top menu bar and I'm going to go down to where it says data merge manager. Inside of here, I'm going to explain this to you in just a moment. But for now, all I need to do, because I've already set this up for this document, is go ahead and just hit generate right here. So once that's been generated, that is going to open up a brand new project file over here on the right hand side. So if we go back over to the left, this is the original document that I started with. And over on the right hand side is the new one that Affinity has created. And inside of here, you can now see I have 146 pages. And if I just drag my way all the way to the top and I just start on page one, I'll zoom out a little bit so you guys can see this a bit better. And we'll start making our way down the document. And you can see that I have one quote here. And as we make our way through the pages, you can see each one of the quotes are different across each one of these pages. And the way I've designed this is just really mirrored. So it's basically you've got a quote on this side and you've got a quote on that side on each of the pages. But as we go through these, you can see each one of these quotes are unique. So one thing that you guys may have noticed, which I'm going to go ahead and quickly fix is you'll see that page two and page one just repeats across each one of these pages. However, I need these to count in the correct order. So in order to do that on this document in particular, I'm just going to go up to this menu right here on the left hand side, which says section manager. And inside of here, I've got all of these different sections that I need to delete. And I'll talk you through this in just a moment. If you guys want to go ahead and set up page numbers as well, then I'm going to make my way all the way up to the top. And I want to keep section two as that's where my page numbers are going to start. Pages number one to four don't have any page numbers for my document. So I need to keep section two. So I'm going to hold down shift and select section three. That then is going to select all of those ones in between. And I can go ahead and just delete those. And now I've done that, you can see I've got section one and section two. So if I go ahead and close that, you can see we now have page 10, page 11, page 12, page 13, all the way throughout. So that has now fixed my numbering issue. And just to show you, if I go back to the beginning of the document, we don't have any page numbers on the first four pages. And my page one will start right here and it'll start making its way up throughout. So there's a quick demonstration of my running journal. Like I said, if you guys would like to get your hands on one of these, I will leave the link in my description. These are all handmade by myself. Unfortunately, I can't post outside of the United Kingdom as a postage cost is far too expensive and you end up paying double the price of the product. But for any of you guys that are in the United Kingdom, feel free to go ahead and check out my Etsy store. So what we're going to do from here is now begin the project file so you guys can learn how this is done. So we're going to go up to file on the top menu bar and we'll select new. And inside of here, we'll just base this on maybe a journal. So I'll go ahead and select A5. In the pages tab, I'm going to make sure I've got on facing pages and we need the number of pages to be two. So I'll go ahead and just hit create. So inside of here, you can see we have our two pages and we just need to set this up really to be kind of a journal look. So maybe some lined paper. So the quick, easy way of doing that is we'll go ahead and grab our table tool and we'll just drag this out 
from one side to the other filling that up and we'll just go into our table options which you can find up here on the top menu bar on the right hand side so if you select that table option inside of here we're going to have all of the features that are required to adjust all of our cells and columns so first of all we'll go ahead and we'll select all of these and we're going to make these a little bit bigger with the height so we'll go ahead and change that from 4.2 to around 7.1 then what we're going to do next is remove all of these lines that are separating our cells. So we'll go ahead and choose the border options over here and we're going to select that inside vertical and we'll go ahead and we'll just turn that off using the X and then we'll just see what we've got. So there is our lined paper. However, looking at that, I don't think these lines are very clear. So what we're going to do is make them just a little bit thicker. So I'll go ahead and select all of those. This time around inside of the border, we're going to go ahead and select the inside horizontal and we'll just adjust the size of that one to maybe 0.5. And what I'm also going to do is just turn off the outside border, which will be that one right there. And I'll just go ahead and hit the X. Then we'll see what we've got. So that looks pretty good. What I'll also do quickly is just get rid of any additional rows that we don't need by just dragging that all the way down back up to the top and I'll go ahead and just deselect it. And then there is our first line paper and we're just going to make a copy of that and then we'll just take that over to the second page. So command or control C to copy, go to your second page and command or control V to paste. And now we have the two different pages aligned paper. So you guys may want to set this up differently to maybe have a bit more space at the bottom for your quote. However, just to be quicker with the demonstration, I'll just place a quote at the top of the page on all of the pages. OK, so before we start putting any quotes onto the page that we have right here, what we need to do is we've got to set up a spreadsheet file with all of the individual quotes that we have available for our document. So you guys are going to need access to either Microsoft Excel Apple Pages or there are a number of free different spreadsheet software that you guys can download for free. As long as you can export that as an Excel file, you are good to go. So for me, because I have Microsoft Excel, I'll go ahead and use that. So I'll go and open that up. OK, so inside of Microsoft Excel, you can see that we have all of our columns and cells right here. And all we're going to use is column A and B. And what I'm going to do before we get started is I'm going to drag out column A to be a little bit bigger as all of our quotes are going to be quite long. So we need to make sure we can see and read all of those. And we'll do the same with column B. So in the top of column A and column B, we're going to just write in on column A right page. Then on column B, we'll go ahead and write in the left page. Then what I'm going to do with those is just center them because it's going to look a little bit better when we start putting our list underneath. Then all we got to do at this point is start typing in all of the individual quotes that we have for our pages across each one of these rows. So if you guys are going to have 50 quotes and the way you want to set this up is you want to have 25 down here on the right page and then you want to have 25 over on the left page. So like I said, just make your way through all the rows and write in all your individual quotes to be a little bit quicker with the video. I'll go ahead and pause it and I'll write in some quotes now. OK, so this is what I've come up with for our journal. I just got all of these off the Internet. I didn't sit here and write all these myself. So you guys are free to go ahead and just see if you can find any for your own document. But what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to go ahead and copy one of the longest ones that I can find, which is going to be this one right here. So I'll go ahead and just copy that. Then I'm going to go back into Affinity Publisher. Then I'm going to go over to the left hand side toolbar menu and I'm going to select the frame text tool. And I'm just going to drag that out to a rough size that I'm happy with. And inside of here, I'm going to go and paste what we just copied. Then I'm going to select all of that using Command or Control A. And I'm going to go and center that. And I'm going to make the text a little bit smaller to maybe a size 8. Then I'm just going to start to adjust this and put it where I'd like it to go. So for this in particular, we'll have it just in the center of the document and just a little bit closer to the top. And I'll go ahead and just center that in the middle of the box as well. So we'll center that vertically. And then that is going to be our first quote done for that page. So we'll just go ahead and make a copy of that. And then we'll go back to page one or our right page and we'll paste that in here as well. And it doesn't matter that they both say the same thing as this is going to change in just a moment when we come to generate our files. So what we need to do if we go back into Excel and you've got all your list ready, you just need to go up to file. Then you're going to go down to save as. And you're going to give this a name and just save it to anywhere you'd like to keep it on your computer. For me, I'll just choose a desktop. So go ahead and choose save. Then once you've done that, go back into Affinity Publisher. Then we're going to go up to the window option on the top menu bar. And we're going to go down to where it says Data Merge Manager. 
Inside of here, just make your way down towards the bottom left hand side to where you have this button that says add data my source. Go ahead and select that. Then you're going to locate that on your hard drive where you just saved it to and simply just import that into your data merge. Then you can see it will appear over here on the left hand side. So for now, we can go ahead and just ignore this window and we'll close that and come back to that in just a moment. But what we do need to do is access our fields menu or our fields tab, which is going to be over here on the left hand side. If you guys don't see this fields tab inside of your left hand side menus, then just simply make your way up to window on the top menu bar, go down towards the bottom to where it says references and just make sure that you have that fields check and then you'll have access to this as well. So inside of our fields menu, what we need to pay attention to is going to be the data merge section right here, which you can see that is referenced in the document that we just created. So what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna go ahead and select the prompt that we have right here on our right page. And what we need to do is we need to select all of the text inside of this box. So if we go ahead and we just double tap and we hit command or control A to select all. And what we need to do is double tap right here on the right page. So once we do that, it just comes up saying right page. However, don't worry too much about that. That's going to be just to demonstrate this worked. So we're going to go over to our left page and we'll do the same thing here. So we'll go ahead and we'll just select all of that text. And this time around, we're going to double tap on the left page and then that will update that to left page. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back up to window, open up our data merge manager once again. And inside of this menu, if you guys turn on this preview with record, you can see this is going to change to the quotes that we've got inside of our list. So we'll go ahead and we'll just turn that on. And now you can see we've got one quote there. And if we look up here, we've got a different quote there. So all we need to do at this point now is go ahead and just hit this generate button. And that is going to make around 50 pages, which I think was the amount of quotes that we had. So if I go ahead and I just hit generate, that will open up a brand new project inside of Affinity like it did before. We'll go back to our pages. We can see we now have all of these different pages and each one of these are gonna have a different quote throughout as you can see. So just make your way through all of that. So you guys can see how easy that really was. So just before I end the video, because I pretty much covered most of this, I will show you guys how I did the page number in in case that's something you was wondering about. So for now, I'll go ahead and just close this because I don't need it. And we'll go back to our original file that we was working on. So what I'm gonna do is add a couple of more pages before this one. So we'll go ahead and we'll just add some more pages. So what's gonna be important is we wanna make sure that we always start on the right hand side for our page one and our page two will always end on the left. So we'll go ahead and we'll add two more pages in here. Okay, so now we have our two additional pages. As you can see right there, we've got that blank one and that blank one there. And we're gonna want our numbers to start on page three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our masters and inside of here, we're gonna go ahead and add some page numbers. And the way we're gonna do that is by simply just dragging out a text box at the bottom here. Then we'll make our way up to our top menu bar to where it says text. We'll go down and we'll choose insert and just go into fields and type in page number. Then I'll go ahead and just select that and I'm going to center that. And then what I'm going to do is just make a copy of that for the other side. So I'll go ahead and just make a copy and paste that, move that over to the other side. And then we have our page numbers. So what we need to do is now create a blank one of these as well. So if we go ahead and we just make a new page spread for our master. So master A is going to have our page numbers, whereas master B, we want to go ahead and delete those. Then we'll go back to our page one. So what we need to do inside of here is we need to apply our master B as that's not going to have any page numbers. So with page one selected, we're going to right click on our mouse. We're going to choose apply master. And inside of here, we're going to choose master B and we'll go ahead and hit OK for the specific pages. And we'll go and do the same thing on page number two. So we'll right click apply master and we'll go ahead and choose B once again. Go ahead and hit OK. Now with pages three and four, we wanna go ahead and apply master A. So we'll go ahead and choose apply master. Make sure that we do have A assigned to that one and we do that on both of those. So with that now done, as you can see, if we go onto the page right here, it says page three. However, we want this to say page one and page two rather than page three and page four. So the way we're gonna do that is by using sections. So we're gonna go up to the menu once again here, as you've seen at the beginning of the video, which says section manager. 
inside of here, we're gonna create ourselves a new section using this button. And we want this to apply after page three to page four. So we'll make sure that we start on page three. And then the important thing you wanna do here is make sure you choose restart page numbering at page one. Go ahead and close that. And now you can see we have page one and we have page two and these remain blank like they did before. So now we've done that, all we've got to do is regenerate this once again. So if we go back up to window, we go back down to data merge manager. But what we need to do before we go ahead and hit generate is we need to target specific pages because we want to ignore page one and two. And we just want to make sure that we do generate from page three to page four. So inside of the merge pages section, we're going to go ahead and choose page range. And we're going to change that to page three and page four so that then is going to specifically target that one and that one which are going to have our prompts and our lines on them so once you've gone ahead and done that go ahead and hit generate once again then that will generate our file like it did last time this time around we're going to have our page numbers as you can see so we have all of our line pages across all of these different quotes across each one of those just like at the beginning of the video we do have page two and page one across each one of these pages but of course, we'll go ahead and fix that in just a moment. I'll go to the top of the page so you guys can see that we don't have any page numbers on page one and page two. So all that's left to do at this point is go into our section manager, make your way down to the bottom once again, select the last one, bring your way all the way back up to the top. We want to keep section two, so hold down shift and select section three, then go ahead and just delete all those sections. Then once we close that, you can see we now have page one, page two, page three, page four, etc. Then from here, all you guys have got to do is simply save this project if you want to save it. So you can come back to it at a later date or you can just go straight up to file, go down to print and go ahead and just print this out. Of course, for this specific size, you would want to go ahead and choose that to an A5 so it's going to fit all of your paper but it really is as easy as that. If you guys found this video useful, then please go ahead and give me a thumbs up as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button as I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers in 2025 and you guys can really help me out with that. But for now, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.